Hi, welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Today I'm here with more airboat tuning. I've talked about some of the issues I've had in the recent past with this, and I'm still trying to track down some of those issues here with this motor. One of the issues, of course, is the carburetor manual says to adjust the carb while the engine is running. And you really can't do that because here's the carb adjust needles, and here's the propeller just poised to take your fingers off if you reach back here and try to screw with these from inside the boat. So, I still need a way to adjust these from forward of the carburetor. I've gone online and I've whined on Reddit and I've whined on other websites and people have said, oh you've got a vacuum leak or you've got some kind of compression problem or you've got some other issue than those carburetor needles. Now from working on plenty of old dodgy outboards I am convinced that 99.9999% of engine problems with a carbureted engine is always the carburetor. I hate carburetors. I've said this in other videos. I will continue to whine about them in this video and future videos. So, just to make the commenters on the internet happy, I will check out the compression and I will attempt to check the vacuum on this little engine. Now, people have said, why don't you just take the prop off and adjust this thing with no propeller on it? Unfortunately, that isn't very realistic because then you've got this little engine spinning with no load and you can't really get a reliable idle adjustment when the engine isn't doing anything. The prop also cools this engine. This is approximately a 30 horsepower engine and you'll notice it's tiny. This is a 30 horsepower outboard. It's huge. It's also water-cooled. So to get 30 horses into a space this small, this engine has to be air-cooled by the flow being generated with the propeller. So I can't really run it for any length of time without the propeller, or it's just going to overheat. And I also can't adjust the idle, because as soon as I put that prop back on, it's going to idle completely differently with the weight and resistance of that prop going around. So essentially, to tune this while it's running, I will need to build that remote carb adjust. So, first up, I have borrowed some compression testers, and I'm going to see if this engine has compression, and if it has enough. Since this is a teeny tiny little spark plug, the threads on this compression tester won't fit. Fortunately, I also borrowed this one that has just a rubber bit that you stick in the hole. Now normally you should never get back here and turn the prop because if you prop it, or prop start it, it could come around and take your head off. However, there's no spark in here. In general though, I try to avoid being back here and pushing or moving the prop around because I don't want it to fire up. Well, that doesn't work at all. My little rubber attachment is all cracked here so it's not making a good seal in the engine block. So let's try something else. Let's see if I can find some that's threaded properly to make a little adapter for that compression tester. Let's see what other parts I've saved. Alright, I think this is going to work as an adapter for spark plug sizes. And this is the benefit of hoarding all kinds of stuff. Eventually, if you dig around, you're going to find the wrong tool for the right job. So I'm going to use this more standard automotive spark plug, thread it into this PVC piece, and kind of melt out the approximately correct threads. Then we'll take this little guy, which matches the threads on my small spark plug, and we'll just kind of wedge it in there with some tape and maybe some hot glue and get it airtight.
You know, I just realized, why do I need a special compression tester at all? I've got this whole box of crummy gauges over here. This is that box I was going to put up for sale in a garage sale, but I just keep using parts out of it. Alright, that looks like a gauge. And it might even thread into my stupid adapter here. There, I didn't need a compression tester at all. The garbage was with me the whole time. All right, my little redneck gauge maxed out at around 100 PSI, which is approximately correct for this engine. So I seem to have enough compression in here. Now the other thing that people on the internet were talking about is a vacuum leak. And this doesn't really have a vacuum system or vacuum lines. It's pretty simple. There's just the engine head and the crank, and that's about it. So the only place that there's going to be vacuum is in that engine head. And I'm pretty sure that the compression test would also reveal a vacuum leak in that head. Um, so I don't really know what else to do with that. People have talked about a cigar test where you run the engine and blow cigar smoke at it. But you've got this giant propeller blasting a ton of air around, so that's not going to work. Somebody else suggested spraying the engine with something while it's running and see if it accelerates from sucking in that fuel. So in the interest of just pure scientific inquiry, let's see if it'll fire if I crank it over while spraying some starting fluid on the engine head and any gaskets that could possibly be leaking or sucking in extra air. All right, well, it does not appear to have a vacuum leak. I've covered about every square inch of that engine with starting fluid and cranked over the starter, and I'm probably lucky I haven't blown up my garage by now. So, I'm out of good ideas from the internet, and I am back to blaming the carburetor for everything that's wrong with my life. So, I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and put in that carb adjust device, if I can figure out how to build it. Now, sooner or later, somebody will probably come along in the comments and say, You're doing it all wrong! This is wrong and bad! And fair enough, I do a lot of stuff wrong on this project. Like zip ties on everything. Duct tape on everything. It's kind of a learning process to do things by trial and error for me. And yes, sometimes those trial and error lessons are expensive. Alrighty, so I think it's time to build that remote carb adjuster. Now, I have a dim idea of what I want for that, and I don't have the parts for it. And that means it's time for a trip to the Promised Land. So my basic idea here is something like this. I'm going to have some things and some stuff, and some things are going to connect to some other things, and then they're going to rotate, and they're going to adjust that carburetor remotely. So back on the business end, I'm thinking of this rotating dingus is going to connect up to another rotating dingus somewhere, and then we'll have a shaft with a knob on the end that goes up to the front where I can rotate everything and adjust these needles without endangering my hand. So that's the rough idea. And, you know, most of my ideas are pretty rough. So, we're probably going to have a nice montage of me doing things wrong before it eventually cuts to a thing that looks like a thing. Go! <laughs>
Alrighty, after a lot of screwing around and a lot of false starts, I made some brackets for this adjustment device. And I can now adjust my carb needle, at least the low speed needle, from up front. So I've got my little gears and my little toothed belt. And I can adjust this needle from up front now. The high speed is going to have to wait. That seems like it's okay. It doesn't need as much screwing around as the low speed idle needle needs. So, knock on wood, I don't need to make another adjuster for that high speed needle right now. I'm sure there's a better way to do this than my hacked together redneck bracket, but I'm going to see how well this works so far. Now I see a lot of guys on YouTube with some fancy equipment. They've got their CNC routers and their laser cutters and their 3D printers and their lathes and their mills and all kinds of stuff to make custom brackets like this. I don't have any of that stuff. I got some power tools that I found in the trash. I got a trashy airboat. Let's see if it runs. So my handy dandy little mix adjuster is working pretty well. This thing now idles reliably for the first time since I've assembled it, and that's pretty good. So we're going to have to take this out on lake again, and it's currently about 40 degrees, so our lakes are in danger of becoming lakes again and not just giant ice skating rinks. Alrighty, so my remote mixture adjust mostly works now, and it does try to back itself off a little bit from all the vibration. So I'll probably have to tighten this down or get some kind of a locking mechanism so that it doesn't uh, adjust itself while the engine's running. But otherwise, uh, this thing is working pretty well now. And we did have a little minor accident with it, and I might post that as a separate video just because the reaction shot is pretty funny. So uh, check out that video if you want to see me crash this thing. Fortunately, I didn't break it, but uh, it was pretty hilarious. So that's it for this video on building a carburetor adjusting mechanism for the airboat. Tune in next time when we do more stupid things with the airboat and hopefully don't destroy it. And uh, go ahead and like and subscribe if you want to see the future adventures of my redneck boat project or whatever else I get up to next. Thanks for watching.